So today was cut day for the NFL and the Philadelphia Eagles, and some players had to go. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike. Talking sixes in the bird game, that's our life. Competition, we ain't scared, yeah, that's what we like. Win or lose, you know we showing up and we gon' fight. Uh, you see, we strive for the sky every day that go by. And every single week we scream and fly, Eagles fly. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike, yeah. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike, yeah. What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Talk Podcast. And today, we got to talk about the Eagles trimming the roster to get to the 53 mark. Yes. Now, this necessarily ain't the final product. We can go ahead and move some pieces out, bring some pieces in, put some players on IR to free up some spots. But Tuesday, 4 o'clock, you got to get your roster to 53, and we did that, and we are going to talk about it. But before we do that, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Do not forget to turn on post notifications so you know when we drop videos, go live, all that good stuff. It's greatly appreciated. If you hit the like button, it goes a long way for the channel. And follow your boy on Twitter. That's where we talk eagle news behind the YouTube scenes. We've been talking about the cuts on Twitter all day, but you know how we start these videos, but not for the guys who were cut. E-A-T-L-E-S, Eagles! Now let's go. Let's just come right out there and show every single player that was cut from the Philadelphia Eagles. Now there are some surprising ones, are some, yeah, head scratchers, but it is what it is. Let's start with the players we released, not waived, released. Safety, Andrew Adams, release. Tackle, LaRaven Clark, release. Running back, Jordan Howard, release. Defensive tackle, Hassan Ridgeway, release. Tight end, Richard Rodgers, release. And cornerback, Kayvon Seymour, release. Meaning, they're just released. Anybody can sign them at will. We could go ahead and sign them back. Say we move a guy on IR and we bring back a Jordan Howard because it was surprising to me that the Eagles are going to go into a 17 game season, an extra game and only have three running backs where Miles Sanders hasn't showed he could stay healthy for a whole season. And that is concerning to me a little bit. So I thought Jordan Howard would make the roster again. We could resign him at any second in an hour in two days, as long as nobody else does but we would have to get a guy on IR, this, that, and a third, PUP, all that stuff that how he's doing behind the scenes. Now, let's get to the guys that were waived, and the only way we have a shot to claim them back to the practice squad is if they go through all 31 teams. Safety, Graylin Arnold, guard slash tackle, Kyoto Asawuka, you know I'm bad with names, wide receiver, yes, Travis Fulgham. Wide receiver John Hightower, running back Jason Huntley, cornerback Michael Jaquette, and also cornerback Craig James. Now let's stick with them two wide receivers because we talked about this for the last week or so. J.J. Arcega Whiteside, John Hightower, Travis Fulgham, two make it, one gets cut. We were going to go into the season with at least six wide receivers, and we still might. Other teams are cutting their wide receivers. So who's to say that the Eagles don't like this wide receiver over there or this wide receiver over there? So you can't just say that we're going to go in with five wide receivers. I doubt we will go in that thin at that position where we don't have a veteran presence. So who knows? Now, should J.J. Arcega Whiteside made a team? Probably not. We've seen him for multiple years and what he can offer. Not saying he can't get better, but I'm not holding my breath. And a lot of people are going to say Travis Fogum, four or five game sample size, outdid anything J.J. Arcega Whiteside or even a John Hightower did, and I agree with you. But we did hear murmurs at the end of Doug Peterson's tenure that his practice habits were not good, that his work ethic and practice was not good. Now, some people say practice is practice. But if you come in as a coaching staff and you're preaching competition, competition, practice, practice, competition, and then you see a guy who's not doing it in front of your face, well, then 
they're not going to care about a four or five game sample size between Whiteside and Fogum and this, that. They only care about what they've seen. And so maybe it still is the wrong decision from Howie and the coaching staff. But if he does have that lazy work ethic, then I don't know. I don't know. But there's nothing that's going to make me say, oh, I heard reports that he did this, that, and the third, or he can do this. Am I still curious? Is he more of a flash in a pan? And I would have liked to have a season to see it. But right now we put him on a waiver, and he's a guy I do not think will get past. Some of these teams out there, one of the 31 teams will say, hey, his nickname was TF13, full goal, whatever they were saying in Philly for three to five weeks. Let's give him a shot. Put him on the last ro- last roster spot. So I think he gets taken. Now, John Hightower, I can see getting back to the practice squad, and we will have to see. Now, once again, the waiver guys, John Hightower, uh, Travis Fogum, even safety Graylin Arnold, all are guys that have to go through waivers. Again, Graylin Arnold, Graylin Arnold was a fringe guy. I thought he was going to be on a bubble anyways. Michael Jaquette, man, I love the story, but come on, man, he's getting burnt. Now, there is something I want to talk about. And a lot of people are probably not going to like it, but I don't care. Adam Schefter reported that the Bears released cornerback Desmond Trafant today per source. Trafant left Chicago on August 13th to be with his father who passed away on August 15th. And he remained with his family during camp. Trafant still owed $3.5 million from the Lions, but wants to continue playing. Listen, Desmond Trufant by no means is a lockdown, shutdown corner this part of his career. He is 30 years old, but back in his heyday, he was a legit corner, and I do think he got gas left in the tank. So again, how are we treating this season? I know we have the youth and McPherson, Avante Maddox. We're going to look into more youthful corners and linebackers and safeties as we go through this era with Nick Sirianni, but... We signed Ryan Kerrigan. We signed Anthony Harris. We did go out and get some guys who were on prove-it deals who are 28, 29, and, and, and Kerrigan's older. So was Brandon Graham. So if we are that scared of the depth at cornerback, which we let Jermichael, Michael Jaquette go, Craig James, who is it? Right now on the roster, my, after Slay and Nelson, it's McPherson, Avante Maddox, well, Avante Maddox, then McPherson, and that's it. So this guy at 30 years old can be a bridge cornerback until we have that first-round pick that we can possibly invest in a corner. Whether it's the LSU guy or not, we would have to draft high or trade two first rounds to get up there and all that stuff. But we need to get corners and safety play in the draft. We need a lot of things when we talk about replacing the older guys who are close to 30 or 31, 32 but this could be a br- a bridge cornerback, and he could be a depth piece. I'm not saying start him over Nelson. Definitely not over Slay. Leave Maddox in the slot. McPherson and him could be your depth because we still need more pieces there. There's no way we go into the season with McPherson on the bench, meaning Slay, Nelson, Maddox in the slot, and then McPherson is just like, where do I play? Do I play if Nelson gets injured or Maddox gets injured? No way, no how. So this is a veteran guy who can help some of the young guys, only McPherson and Maddox. And I just think it's a smart move, especially if you can get him for a decent pay because he's 0-3.5 from Detroit. So I don't know. One-year deal, that's all I'm asking. I'm not saying he's a difference maker, but we need bodies. We need bodies at that position. There's no way. I, there's no way that we go into the – season with only three running backs I don't think so there's no way we go into the season with five wide receivers and there's no way we go into the season with four or five secondary pieces I'm talking about defensive backs no way no how we just cut a safety in Andrew Adams there's no way we go in that little so Howie Roseman is going to be working the waiver wire the release players whether it's safety corner running back wide receiver Remember them for safety, corner, running back, wide receiver. Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section when it comes to who we released, who's out there, what moves should be made, and who do you think is going to be added? Because like I just said, let me know your thoughts on how many running backs, wide receivers, cornerbacks, and 
even safety. How many are we going to go into the season with? Because it's not what we have on a roster. I can guarantee that at least half of them. Maybe they skimp on two of the four, but no way all of them. If the biggest needs to me right now is extra corners. And maybe corners is one. And maybe I would say running back. I would go a little empty-handed at the wide receiver because Kenneth Gainwell can play in the slot. But with Miles Sanders being a guy who gets banged up, I think you need four running backs in the room. Let me know all your thoughts because right now I'm just talking off emotion. I just got home. I was rushing to get home. And a lot of things are going on. But let me know all your thoughts in the comment section. I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Talk Podcast. We out.